21. 21. Bro, we dreamed and we got a wish. Morocco, they beat Portugal. Bro, do you believe this? I could have been. Bro, I was yesterday, I was like in disbelief. Literally. Yeah. Um, I still kind of can't really believe it, to be honest. <laughs> Them and Croatia have done really. But um, it's history, man. We got our first African semifinalist. Yeah, man. That's, that's nuts. And it just goes to show that, like, with new lows, like in 2018 for Africa, comes new highs, like this year. This is amazing, man. So let's talk about this game. And it would have been nice if we got to talk about it yesterday. But, you know, things happen. You know, life happens. And we, we couldn't meet up to do this. But we're here. Better late than never. Are you drinking a Budweiser? Oh, no. This is like, <laughs> it's a, a diet Dr. Pepper. <laughs> oh, I thought you were drinking a Budweiser, you know what I mean? Because... um Budweiser is a matter of the match, man. It, it, it has to be Yusuf Edezairi for that leap. But I don't think he got it. I don't think he got the, the man of the match, though. Did he? Did he get the man of the match? Um, I think, oh. he, I think he did. Oh, he did. Okay. But, yo, that leap, I heard someone refer to it as a dunk. He literally <sighs> leapt so high and he towered above... Ruben Diaz, who was flat-footed. I think Ruben Diaz was actually kind of, you know, preventing him from, like, protecting the ball so that the goalkeeper could come out and grab the ball, in a way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And Yusuf Enazari, man, that leap was sick. And that header down in the ground into the roof of the net, I couldn't believe it, bro. I, when he rose to meet that with his head, I, I didn't think he was going to get on the end of it. I thought that cross was going out for a goal kick. But he leaped like a guy with springs in his shoes. <laughs> Literally, man. Listen, yeah. that, that is what you call that is what you call rising to the occasion. And that is exactly what Morocco did on the day. They rose to the occasion. I still cannot believe this. 1-0 over Portugal. A Portugal team that had just defeated Switzerland 6-1. Yeah. Played almost the same team with one change made in Ruben Neves and William Carvalho. I think this game would have suited William Carvalho a bit more in terms of like the midfield battle because Sophia and Amrabat, man, I don't know. this this Was this guy this good before the World Cup? Because this World Cup, he's just gone up a couple levels, man. Seriously. Yeah, I don't think he was. I think he was relatively quiet at AFCON earlier this year. Um, yeah, he's been he's been just regular. You know, what I mean, he's a good player. He's you know, I, I would say he's he was decent. He was pretty decent. You know what I mean? And he he just turned into a total beast for this World Cup. The man is look. I actually took a look at Sophia and Amrabat's heat map. He never ever ventures into the attack. He wow. just stays in defense and in the midfield for the entire game. I was like, I, my mind was blown. I, I couldn't, listen, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And I got to pull that up, actually, so that you could see for yourself. You need to see this. You really need to see this because I couldn't believe it. And if you check Hakimi's heat map as well, he never goes over to the left side. So... It's like these guys are so freaking disciplined. And that is what, you know, the Moroccan team, you know, it's based on and players staying in their pos position and not going all over the place. And it that's why they're so good defensively when you really think about it. I, I was like, I, I, I figured it out. It's like I felt like I cracked the code. And look at this heat map, bro. Look at this heat map at the World Cup. Like, where, where's the heat map? I need to find a heat map at the World Cup. Um, right there. Look at yeah. this heat map. Look at that heat map. Oh, my god! The man never goes into the box. He never goes into the opposition box. Never. Never. That's not his thing. You see that? That is why they've been so good. A lot of the times he's helping out at right back. You see that? He's helping yep. out a lot down the right, the right side. 
And that's why they've been so disciplined, man. And keeping this Portuguese team scoreless after they had just scored six. Bruno Fernandes, who did glance off the post. Gonzalo Ramos. João Felix, you know, forced the big save out of Bonu. You had Ronaldo on the field. You know, you had Bernardo Silva. You had Rafael Leal, who came on and really looked good. And none of these guys could beat the Moroccan goalkeeper. They could not penetrate the defense. Yeah, Morocco have not conceded a goal yet in, their, in the semifinal. I know they have the own goal, Canada. I don't count that personally. Um, <laughs> you and I were saying it was going to be an uphill battle because Portugal had really come to life in that match against Switzerland. Not only did they put uh, Portugal away in 90 minutes, they kept a clean sheet yet again the, against them. And I think, yeah, it, it, it's really, it, it's down to Amrabat. I think he's really the anchor in that midfield. And he pieces together that back line. And like you said, he drops in deep when he needs to to help out at right back. And it's, it's a winning formula for Morocco. And they're doing it while still creating a lot of chances going forward because – this match, it's easy. If someone didn't watch this game, it's easy to look at it and be like, oh, maybe they, they bunkered down, they scored off a set piece. Morocco could have made this 2 3 nil. The second half finishing, which we'll, we'll get to in a moment, I'm sure you'll bring up, um, it was atrocious. That's the only real criticism I have from them. Um, of course, Portugal had a lot of chances to come back into the game as well, but this could have been 2 3 nil for either way. Yeah. And Morocco could have ended up winning this game comfortably. I really think they could have won comfortably. Yeah, Abu Kalal did have a great chance at the end there, you know, that he didn't put away. But look, look at the stats. It speaks for itself. Nine shots, three on target for Morocco with only 26% of the ball. And look at Portugal. They were only, they were restricted to 12 opportunities, 12 shots, three on target. Same as Morocco. Which is crazy when you think about it. That's how much, you know, they restrict their opponent. That's how much they stifle and suffocate you as a team and that is what the game is based on but as you mentioned they're also very good at creating chances going forward down the right through Hakimi and of course ZH cutting in on his left Buffalo over on the other side another player that deserves a whole lot of credit is Azadine Onahi oh my god he was massive in that game some of the runs he made I was like wow wow and the thing is you know Onahi and Buffal, they're playing for Angers, and Angers are, like, suffering right now in Ligue 1. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if, because this World Cup is being held in the middle of the season, why you could see a team like <clears throat> Croatia or, not Croatia to a, you know, Croatia to a lesser extent, but Morocco, with a lot of these players, basically, you know, that some of us never heard about before, arising to the occasion because they haven't really been playing at these high 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 levels for the entire season you see what i mean like um you know you're bringing guys like naya for he he just came back from an injury so he he was pretty fresh until he got injured roman saiz he's over there in um turkey then you have onahi bufal and azari hardly did anything for Sevilla. he has not scored a goal for Sevilla this season so he's hungry you see what i mean Ziyech hardly kick a ball for Chelsea. He's not playing enough for Chelsea. Mazrui hardly playing for um, Bayern Munich as well. Um, Hakimi, he's playing for PSG. They're they breezing league on. So, so, so you get a, a, a picture. Plus, they have all these players that's coming in from local as well who plays for, you know, some local teams, you know, in Morocco, as well as youngsters like Abde and Abu Klal you know, Sabiri. So you could see the whole team dynamic. And another thing too, they play as a team. They, they don't have a, a specific ego in the team that overshadows what they do, like a Ronaldo. You see what I mean? No, everyone knows their role. Exactly. And they can switch off at any, at any moment and, and, and assume any other role to help out elsewhere in the pitch. And psychologically, they're riding a, a big high right now. Bro, I'm telling you, by be by okay, be in Belgium, Spain, and um, of course, Portugal. How many teams could say that they do this? Even bigger teams. This this is no this is no easy feat. No. What Morocco have done here is something special 
first African team to make it to the semis and only the third team outside of South America and Europe to do so after the USA did it back in the day. We don't even count that. And of course, South Korea did it in 2002. And that was a controversial run to the semis as well. Morocco, I, I think they are probably the purest team outside of Europe and South America to do this. Yeah, I mean, you can make a good case. I mean, they're in very small company to begin with. And um, this is one of the biggest like upset runs in World Cup history. Maybe it's the biggest, and it could very well yet prove to be the biggest if, if they two, can continue. Two more, two more wins. Two, could you believe this? Two more wins, and these guys, these guys are world <laughs> champions. Do you know what this would do to Moroccan football, bro? Do you know what this would do to Moroccan football? Listen, if Argentina wins, all right, nothing really changes. If France wins, nothing really changes. But if Croatia or Morocco wins this World Cup, oh, man. Listen, man. We'll be talking about this for years and years, decades upon Correct. decades to come. You see what I mean? Because this is a special, special run that these guys have been on. Big up to Walid Regraji because... Since he's taken charge, they haven't lost the game and not even conceding a goal from the opposition, not even in a penalty shootout, bro. <laughs> they're not they're not about that life, Dom. They don't they don't want to give up goals. Um wait, by the way, is that is that your laptop fan making all that noise, bro? No, that's the central. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, God oh, damn. Anyways, look, bro. Um Let's talk about Portugal, and let's talk about Ronaldo's legacy. What 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 is this going to do to his legacy? This uh, exit specifically. Yeah, he look. First of all, <laughs> it's been a he came into the World Cup on controversial um, terms, basically. You know what I mean with the whole and 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 you question the timing of, of, of when Ronaldo does things because. Why did he do this after the World Cup, um, before the World Cup? You see what yeah, I'm saying? Like a few days before the World yeah, Cup. Yeah, that would have, that surely would have affected things all over him, his mind as well. And you think maybe you should have waited until the World Cup was over. Give yourself some time and then get your personal business in order. Take care of that after the national team duties. But he put himself first. That is why Man United sacked him because he went and did an interview. Look, I don't have no problem with him doing an interview. That's his personal thing. If he chose not to want to play with Man United no more, criticize them, that's their thing. But he should have waited because it went and he ate up the spotlight. He came into the World Cup. He scored a penalty that was should not have been even given a penalty in the first place. And then he tried to claim a goal that did not even touch him. You see what I mean? And then he ended up getting benched. And the player that he was benched for went and scored a hat-trick. And then he came on 50th minute and didn't do a thing. Well, to be fair to him, he tested Bono a couple of times. Unfortunate not to score late. Remember when he had that chance? Yep. Yeah, that was a good save by Bono. That was one of the shots on target, by the way. And but but apart from that, he didn't do anything. And you you maybe think did Santos bring him on too early, or should he have started both Ronaldo and Gonzalo Ramos? But what what are your thoughts on the whole Ronaldo situation? He him potentially never winning a World Cup throughout his career, and he wasn't even on the pitch when they won the Euros. So I don't think uh, not winning the World Cup will diminish his legacy overall. I think that he will still go down as one of the most prolific goal scorers in the history of the sport, um, one of the greats of our generation and of all time. Um, Portugal, going out to Morocco in the quarterfinal, though, it's not a very glitz and glamour kind of ending to his career. And I, I agree. I think that he brought a little bit of – uh, unsteady vibes with that whole drama with, with Ten Hag and Man United uh, entering this tournament. Even if it didn't personally affect his relationship with his teammates, still, you don't want to have that right before a tournament. It's just um, you want there to be 
everything be drama free, I think. Um, as far as his like legacy overall, um, you know, he walked off the pitch and the camera showed he was crying. He was in tears. Yeah. I think I th- I don't think it's going to take that much of a hit. I mean, there will be some people who who say that like his ego was his own undoing in this World Cup, but I honestly think Morocco have just been executing the perfect game plan every every match they've come into. And we were talking earlier, you and I, about whether or not he should start after um, the lineup that Santos put out against Switzerland. I don't I don't think Santos screwed up by not starting him. Santos didn't screw. I. I don't think he screwed up, by the way. Santos did what he had to do. He did what he had to do. He won the game against Switzerland. He implemented pretty much the same thing against Morocco. Morocco were just a team that didn't have any conflicts. Switzerland were conflicted. They changed up their game plan. They they were a different team. It's like it's like they changed up their identity for that game. You know, they had one thing going, and they said, "Screw that. Let's be something else." And they they paid. You see what I mean? They paid. And Morocco, they haven't been doing that. They've been very disciplined. And I talk about discipline earlier in the in the video. And that is what was Portugal's undoing. Morocco. Morocco did that because they couldn't break, they failed to break down Morocco. Look at the possession. It's like me saying to you, it's like me saying to you. Let's have a race. Let's have a race or let's have a competition. You're going to have 75% chance basically with the ball to do your thing. And I'm going to only have, I'm going to only have 26% of it. And I still beat you. What does that say? You see what I mean? Of course. What does that? It's like, if I give you more players, like take more players and you still can't beat me. And that is exactly what happened at the end too. Because Chadira picked up a red card. Portugal still, with extra time, couldn't break, couldn't beat them. Yeah. Yeah, and Spain knows Spain knows a thing or two about hoarding possession in such a way and not even getting shots on target, which is what at least Portugal was able to do in this match. Um, no, I, I, I think a lot of like the, the autopsy report of, of Portugal's elimination is, is going to be, and it already has been by a lot of pundits, like scrutinizing uh, Portugal and Fernando Santos. I really just think they come up against a very well-drilled side that might be on a date with destiny. And I think Portugal played pretty all right. I thought the timing of the substitutions was okay. Ronaldo not starting was okay. Game plan was all right. Um, but Morocco has been unrelenting with not giving up goals in this tournament. And this is nothing new, you know, and like prior to this match in this tournament, I mean, so I just think the reason they failed was because Morocco is just in really uh, good form at the moment. Definitely. Before we do move on to the next game, look, man, I want to give special mentions to that left back, um, Atiyah, um, uh, whatever his name is, man, Atiyah Allah. Yeah, yeah, man, he, he got a weird name, but he was good. He threatened going forward. He crossed that ball in for um Zairi. You know, um, big up to El Yamik as well, who stepped in. He gave Pepe a kiss on the head when um Pepe missed that that chance, <laughs> you know. So look, man, it was it was big, man. <laughs> this is a massive win. I love it, man. I don't know if you saw my reactions, but I went nuts. I'm telling you, I'm happy for Morocco, man. Even though I didn't predict them to get out the group, I didn't predict them to do well. I'm I'm happy that things turn out the way it did. So look, um, any any closing thoughts on this match before we move on? I had them doing well in this tournament, and they and they did even better than I expected. So they defied both of our expectations. And you know mm-hmm. they're gonna be relishing this opportunity to eliminate France. Definitely. Um Samuel Etta, bro, he predicted Morocco to make the final. And he predicted them to beat, get get out the group ahead of Belgium, beat Spain, beat Portugal, and beat France. And they're about to do exactly that. That that is nuts. When you, we all laughed at Samuel Eto'o, but well, he also know, had Cameroon winning the World Cup. Yeah, this. but still though, um, he got something right. Yeah, he <laughs> you did. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. So look, we had a big quarterfinals with Croatia knocking out Brazil, sending shockwaves to the football world, four to one penalties. The Netherlands, Argentina, 
4-3 on penalties for Argentina. That was another classic. And we had somewhat of a, I, I wouldn't call this one a classic, but I would say that England screwed up so big. This has to be one of the <laughs> biggest bottle jobs of all time. And how fitting that it's a Tottenham Hotspur player that oh, actually did it. You know, I saw something on Twitter that says you could take Kane out of Tottenham Hotspur, but you can't take the Tottenham Hotspur <laughs> out of Harry Kane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Let really me rub it in. It was against a teammate of his in Hugo Lloris. Exactly. Bro, <laughs> the ball right now is still literally in orbit. It's still in orbit traveling. You see what I mean? Into space right now. Mission. He's going to be the reason that Martians discover football. Bro, mission to Mars, bro. Mission to Mars. Harry Kane, the astronaut. Bro, 2-1 to France. I did predict the France win 3-1. What did you go for? England? I had 2-1 before England, yeah. Oh, and I thought, I thought they could have won. I thought they really could have won this match. I know, um, you, you went for did you go for you went for Portugal too, right? Yeah, this side of the bracket, I got both quarterfinals strong. I had England and Portugal. Oh. So wait, you did predict Croatia to beat Brazil? No. So my round of 16, I got uh, eight out of eight correct. Oh wow, time. that's crazy. I but the quarterfinals, I only got one correct. That was Argentina. <laughs> yeah, the, the round of 16, I could have did better. I could have got all eight, but I just went with a little, you know. Something for you know entertainment purposes, yeah. but um, I don't think bro, most people had Croatia coming through. That was that nah, was nah, nah, no way, no way. If you had Croatia coming through, you would have been a madman, bro. But look, Aurelian Chuameni, bro, what a goal! And this goal only came about because Kyle Walker went walkabouts, running up, you know, attacking, and left the right side way open, and then when they attacked. Then to, to Mbappe and, and Cole, then they switched the play over to the right. Yep. Once they switched the play, England were like all over the place, scampering back. And Griezmann just laying that ball all over to Chuameni and that shot, bro. Oh, my God. From, out, from way outside the box. L listen, man. Listen, man. I don't know what. I don't know, bro. These guys are not even missing Paul Pogba. Listen, everything happens for a reason. If Paul Pogba was in this team... Maybe it would have been Paul Pogba and then Golo Kante in that midfield right there. That's what it would have been. Chua many would have been on the bench like Kamavinga. Remember, these guys have Kamavinga and Kamavinga not even getting minutes. They yeah. had to they had to slot him in at freaking left back to just accommodate him in a game. Kamavinga can't even get in the team, and he's that good because Rabio and Two of many, they, they've been really, really solid in the midfield, man. And Antoine Griezmann, oh, my God. I think Griezmann's been France's best player this whole World Cup. His yeah, but rate. he's not he, – he doesn't have those the, – the numbers, the glamour numbers like the goals, you know what I mean? But he does have the assists. Yep. But still, though, he's been pulling all the strings, man. And that two many goal is something special. I heard, right? Listen, listen to how Fox Sports is so bad, bro. So bad. The, the analysis is hard. So I think it was Clint Dempsey who said, "Oh no." He was saying right that um, and Clint Dempsey is usually decent, you know. But he was saying the reason why the goal went in was because um, Jude Bellingham did not close down. Um, he didn't close down too many in quick enough. The and the ball went through his legs and actually blocked. Pickford from seeing the ball coming in and he was way out I'm telling you I'm like how could you how could you come up with that analysis that Jude Bellingham was the reason why Pickford was beaten you see what I'm saying when the actual reason was that England was carved open because in the build-up to that there was um Mbappe I believe was running down that left flank and there was like concentration on trying to like stop him there but it just left exactly. England susceptible on the on the right side and that's a thing like I thought overall England dealt with Mbappe better than most teams. Yeah, they did. They did. They did. But the problem is <laughs> they have a whole bunch of other guys on and there. That, that is what I mentioned in my preview. I said, okay, look, you want to focus on Mbappe. You could deal with Mbappe, but you also got to worry about Giroud, 
Dembele, Griezmann, Rabiot. and um, you know, Ch Chouameni and Rabiot. And that that shot, man, oh man, that is something special, bro. This this kid, and no, listen, now the world is actually seeing why Real Madrid paid a hundred mil for him. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. He did think he he was doing special things at Monaco, in a Monaco side that wasn't even doing anything, and he was playing for France already. But they know his worth, and they splashed that cash on him, and he's worth it, bro. <laughs> he's worth it. You see what I mean? That yeah. was a special strike to do that at a World Cup in a quarterfinal in a pressure situation like that, bro. True, many man. And the name he got, he got a special name as well, bro. This guy's a legend in the making, I'm telling you. Yeah, but but after England conceded that goal, they were the better team. They were carving France open. They had Upamecano nervous, making a whole lot of mistakes. You know, the Harry Kane foul that was just outside the box. I think you know what I mean. There were there were so many things. There were so many stupid mistakes Upamecano made. And then he give away the penalty. Um, who, who give away the penalty was um. It was too many. Too many, many give away the like penalty. Jekyll and Hyde performance. You had like the moment of brilliance and then a reckless challenge. Yeah, too many that game. Kane, um, Kane stepped up, put away. You know, well executed first penalty. I have to say. Mm -hmm. And after England got that goal, it, England were on top. I was like, oh man, England about to go on to win this game. Well, what's interesting is that right when they equalized, France almost caught them off guard because when the, when they kicked off again, England were yeah right off right after kickoff. Yeah, they were almost punished for it because they had kind of gone to sleep there and they were still trying to like get back. But France moved quickly, and um, I think it was I think it was uh, Rabiot who shot yeah. the pit by Pickford, and Pickford was angry. Yeah, he was screaming at them like, "God, get back and back!" Pickford pulled off a couple of huge saves in this game, and another thing too, this is the first game that Hugo Lloris was actually really tested. Yep. He did nothing all World Cup, and he was scampering all over the place in this game, pulling off big saves. You know, um, dropping the ball, gathering it back, and you know, um, England won top. It was England's game to win. And with that being said, bro, I have absolutely no criticism. Of Gareth Southgate, I think he should continue to be England's manager for as long as he wants because he did the right thing. He got them to another quarterfinal, and these guys screwed up. Harry Kane. Well, yeah, I mean England were on top. Um, Harry Maguire came deathly close. That header he had that scraped the the grazed the post. It looked like maybe Lloris was gonna was gonna meet that because he was he was diving. He looked like he was gonna get a hand to it. Yeah. But the chances that England missed through a. Uh, I think Kane had a couple of shots as well. Saka, whenever they went on the break, and Hugo Lloris, he made he he made like five or Whoa. six big saves. Here. That. Sixteen <laughs> shots, eight on target, eight. France got outplayed. The Can whole you... world knows this. Everyone knows this. And the whole world knows that if England won this match, they'd be the favorites to win the World Cup. Yes, yes, they would be. Indeed. And indeed. um, I, I, but the thing is, like penalties. Yeah, they're a test of nerves, but sometimes you miss some, you make some, you miss some. You know, I feel bad for Harry Kane. I, 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 I kind of do, but in a way, bro, in a way, you know, um, I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind. You, you know, you know what I mentioned, um, with the whole situation with Spain that I was glad that you know some of the younger guys and even the guys of African descent didn't take the penalties. Yeah. I'm glad it wasn't a Marcus Rashford. You know what I'm saying? Because you could see Rashford trying to make amends late with that free kick. You know what I mean? These guys are trying. Sterling were trying. Bellingham, these guys are trying. Because they wanted to be heroes. You know what I mean? It was a chance for them to be heroes there. Rashford was close too. Huh? Yeah, he came close. And Kane, I think, was the perfect man to miss the penalty because he's the captain. You know what I mean? He's England's leading goal scorer, which he became um, level with that goal. He he would have gone up ahead of Rooney as well with that goal. And I don't want to be negative or whatnot, but you know what I mean? He was the right man to miss the damn penalty, man, because 
And he was also the perfect man to take the penalty because he's deadly when it comes to penalty, bro. And that might be his first penalty miss for England, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I was, I was, I was about to say, like, he's in terms for a national team, he's one of the best spot kick takers I've ever seen. And the man sent the ball into orbit, bro. Like, God, yeah. I couldn't believe it. Look, I, I would have, I would, it would have looked a bit better if Hugo Lloris saved it because these guys play together and they practice together. It would have been okay, yeah, who gonna be saved it, but to freaking sky it, yeah, God, damn. you know, why, you know, why that happened because he was trying something new. He, his comfort zone, he usually he does, he, he was trying to uh, place it in the roof of the net. I think he got nervous, he got scared because he knows that look, these guys, him and Larice, they practice together, they penalties, yeah, and I think he tried something different. And I kind of don't blame him because Hugo Larice dived to his um to his left. Which is where the I, first penalty went. Mm -hmm. So there is a chance that he might have saved it if he had tried to do it the same way. So he tried something different. It just didn't work. Yeah, it's a psychology, man. Because when they go back at Tottenham Hotspur, he would, he could say, "Hey, man, you know, look at what I did to you." And and but it's no, it's Loris the one who got the jokes. You see uh, what I'm saying? Yeah. Because this is what Loris is gonna do when they're practicing penalties. Loris is gonna be like, "Make sure you keep it within here, okay?" You know, you know, not not. It'll be funny, but um, England screwed up, bro. England yeah, screwed up because if England had equalized, they take the game to extra time and they win that game. In in my opinion, they win that game. Oh yeah, I I think for sure I, they could have won it in regulation. They could have won it in regulation. Could have been two one the opposite way around. Um. Yeah. Well. Yeah. My 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 bad. What this 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 was this was an opportunity to go two one up, right? Wasn't it? Yeah. Oh no, Harry Kane's penalty specifically, the, the second one. Harry Kane penalty was to what? Equalize, right? It was to equalize, but I'm saying like wait, prior... that was the, wait, was that to equalize? Let, 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 was was that penalty to equalize or was that oh yeah, that that was to equalize. But yeah. the thing is, right? The crazy thing is England was so dominant. That's why it's kind of hard to they were so dominant, and when France got that goal, it was when Giroud um that that chance, that chance that Pickford saved from Giroud, close yep. range, close. And, I was like, wow, how how did he stop that? And and in that moment, Pickford was again livid. The ball was cleared out, but France got it back around the halfway line, and the the attack continued. And then, like thirty seconds later, the same exact thing, cross into the box, Giroud, and this time Pickford couldn't save it. So it, that save that he had was followed up immediately by France scoring because England yeah. they couldn't get repossession of the ball back. They couldn't. Get, you know, get a proper clearance out. And it's, it's unfortunate because like the back line, I think failed Pickford in that, in that instance, he had a good game. And um, I mean, you saw how emotional Giroud was when he scored that, right? Yeah. 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 That was a big goal, man. Giroud. I don't know what it is, man. You, you saw when he attempt some kind of crazy, like, was it him that attempted that crazy um, attempt? He, he attempted like a scorpion kick, man. Like, you know, yeah. when Giroud, he came up clutch this World Cup, I have to say, man. I, I got to give it up to him. How many goals he got? Is it four? Or three? I think he, I think he's, on, four. he's on four. He, and remember last World Cup, you and I grilled him because he didn't score anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's crazy, right, is that if Karim Benzema was at the World Cup, he doesn't start games. You know what yeah. I mean? Karim Benzema, remind you guys, is the Ballon d'Or. The current Ballon d'Or winner, he would have been starting. How do you think if the France repeats? How do you think this guy's going to feel that his country won two World Cups in a row and he played no part in that, bro? That I told you is the ultimate karma, bro. The ultimate karma that he's getting, and he's been playing at high levels, winning Champions League, winning La Ligas, and for France, the moment he has the opportunity. Nothing happens, you know. What I mean, he doesn't make it to the World Cup. Was he part of the the Nations League squad that won the last Nations League? Was he there? Yeah, he was. He was also in the Euros too. Yeah, I think he was there. He yeah, missed yeah. the last two World Cups. That's a, that's yeah. shit, man. That's the punishment, man. That's what you get. But look, France, they won it two goals to one. I have to say, these guys find a goal. They they they, they pull a goal out of thin air when they need one, though.
It's unreal. Yeah. Um, but but England did, I think, expose some weaknesses here. These guys can't keep a clean sheet to save their lives. And the, the defenders, man, go back to um, Theo Hernandez. Like, what kind of dumb decision is that, man? Ridiculous. Like, he wasn't even, like, in a real, like, he wasn't, it, France wasn't even in danger of conceding. He just literally just got into the box. You didn't even know what he was going to do with it. And he just comes up behind him, just shoves him. Exactly. <laughs> like, so it's like a stupid bonehead decision, man. Daft, I'm telling you. And he's lucky. He's a lucky Kane Skyder. Another big talking point, bro. What do you think about Kylian Mbappe's reaction to, to when <laughs> Kane actually? <laughs> you know <laughs> well I, you know what's interesting about that is was he actually laughing because when they showed that the first time yeah. it looked like he was like you know exactly right there he was having yeah. a laugh. but there was there was another there was a video that yeah. showed from a different angle where he was like he raised his arms in the air and he was relieved uh -huh. and it looks more like it looks more like when you're relieved and you scream at the sky you know that kind of emotion Bro, he was laughing, bro. I don't know if he was necessarily laughing. Bro, Kylian Mbappe was laughing. That looks like a laugh to me. <laughs> you think so? Bro, that looks like a laugh to me, bro. You know what I mean? At first glance, yeah. I mean... It's like a laugh out of relief. You know, like that nervous yeah. kind of laugh, like that happiness. Bro, when yeah. someone misses a penalty, you're happy. That's what you feel, happiness. Yeah. If you're the, the opposition team and... They did it, and they go into the, the semis to play Morocco. Yeah. You know, and the other semis, we have Argentina versus Croatia. We spoke about that previously. And what we're going to do for episode 22, we are going to be talking about the semifinals briefly, you know, and getting into that. So, guys, make sure you go check out that episode as well. Episode 22, the semifinals 2022 World Cup. Look. Anything else we need to add for today's episode here for, for these quarterfinal matches? It was not as dramatic of a game day as the first pair of the mm -hmm. quarterfinal games, but uh, history was made. The England-France match was one of the best games of the tournament. It's end-to-end -end stuff, and we're down to the last four. I think we have a pretty good last four for the World yeah. Cup. What do you think about the refereeing, though, overall? You know, you think it's been a bit suspect at times, or you think... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think this guy, uh, La Hoz, who was the uh, official for the Argentina-Netherlands match, he let that get out of hand. He should have had better control in the game. 17 yellow cards. Even there was a there was a few players who got off the hook. The red, and the red card at the end, too, you know? With, with Dumfries. And yeah. do you think in the Morocco game that Chadira deserved that red card or he should have been given a stern warning and then, you know, yeah, that, that referee was a bit suspect too, in my opinion. Yeah, you could make a case for that. And I also think in, in this match here... Um, this referee were, was very, very poor, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, there were moments when, when Bukayo Saka was getting hacked by like uh, by the, the French team and like there was no calls being made. I'm like, yeah, what he, he wasn't what? decisive enough. Like, you know what I'm saying? In I'm glad you mentioned that about the officiating. Cause did you hear Portugal was, was really upset in the um, post match. They were saying how like uh, both Pepe and another player um, were saying that, I don't know how you could have an Argentine referee when Argentina is still in the tournament. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. 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 But that's like but it's just excuses, though. It's excuses. It. Yeah, but we we we'll talk about this some more, bro. Um, do the honors. Thanks for having me on. Hopefully, we'll see you as episode two, guys. Episode twenty-two, God willing. You find me on Twitter, Football Pharaoh, uh, at Soccer Pharaoh. That's at Soccer underscore Pharaoh. Subscribe to my channel. Link in the description box below. Till then, peace out. Peace and cheers. Guys, you could definitely find him on Twitter, man. When you can't get him on the cell phone, <laughs> get him on Twitter, okay? <laughs>